So today we're going to talk about intake air temps and what better than a non-intercooled supercharged car. Welcome back to the channel everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Most likely you had some time off this week, got some stuff done, hung out with family, whatever your particular flavor is. So today we're going to talk about air temperature and its effect on the tune. While this can be primarily something for instance, in a half mile, standing mile, land speed racing, it does have application to quarter mile because even though we're not going to be necessarily pinned as long, you're going to see that the temperatures can still increase dramatically in a short period of time. So as you saw, we have a 66 Mustang with a Haltech 2500, it is fuel injected, it has a Novi 2000 centrifugal on it, and it is hot piped. So... Let's get into some data here real fast. We're going to start with the dyno sheet. It has some valve train stuff going on, so that's one of the reasons it's dying off. We're in the process of resolving that, but it's usable data for, for this discussion. And it was one of the things that the subscriber special, it was a request. So, Solus Soul, I'm getting a little more detail on intake air temp for you. As you can see... Car made 481, 549 torque, basically 550 torque. Really starts to nose over past 4600. That was where the valve train started to create some problems. This particular run peaked out at 12 and a half pounds. And then out the top dropped to about 7, I believe. 6 and a half, something like that. I can't quite see it there. 8.7 it says. I'm pretty sure the car shows less. At any rate, it was starting to nose over. So when we have a centrifugal supercharger or a turbo, we're not going to really talk about root style or helical screw blowers because they have their own inherent issues and fixes. But when we have a centrifugal or a turbo, no intercooler. It's very common on full methanol cars. And the term hot pipe, it's going straight from the compressor cover into the intake manifold what type of temps would you, what type of temps would you, not attempts, would you expect to see? Well, let's look at some of the data logs. And we're going to look at that particular run. As you can see, the boost came up, came up to about 12 pounds. And then 13.7, it shows a little bit higher here for whatever reason. Maybe there was a slight boost leak on the dyno. But then you can see that it tapers pretty quickly and drops off. So towards 5,800 or seven pounds is all that remains. Kind of gives you an idea of the boost curve, what was going on that particular pull for the 480 horse. So let's look at the intake air temp data. And as you can see at that same 5,800 to 6,000 RPM, we're 164 degrees back up here so that we are at 5800 162 but notice notice how fast that came on it it just really spiked fast i'm going to throw manifold pressure in here so we have that boost reference i didn't want to clutter it too much but it'll make it a little bit easier to see so as the boost is coming up we can see the temp is coming up and you'd think oh man it's pretty efficient down low but we're going to get into that. We're going to see that the number you're seeing there, for instance, 115 degrees, probably isn't the real number. So at peak boost, it shows 128. And the intake air temp sensor is at a 90 degree angle to the airflow. So it should be relatively accurate. It's a GM 3.8 MPT, the old standard, been around forever. But as we get up here, we start to see, even at lower boost, oh man. 164 degrees. And then when you look after the pole, it's 167. So what you've actually seen is kind of an offset because the response time of that intake air temp sensor is slow. Even though we are here at, let's say 5.4 seconds, it says 5.413. And then right here, 6.6, 1.2 seconds later, it was still climbing. 
So realistically, those temperatures probably need to move to the left just because of the lag time of that sensor. The peak boost probably was the 162 or the 167 even could have been peak boost and it could have started to taper off after that. So what do we do when we have high intake air temps? Ordinarily, we're going to have an intercooler, right? Maybe you put meth on the pipe. My Nissan Cedric is set up that way. I'm spraying methanol prior to the throttle bodies right after the turbo because from the factory, it was non-intercooled. So in that car, that was worth four miles an hour. It's not a very fast car. It's best times at 1366 at 100 or almost 101 maybe. Typically, it runs high 99s, low 100s depending on if I have it on C16 or Q, the Q does give me a little bit extra. So that's one solution. Obviously the intercooler is the best solution, but regardless of how we're getting the air temp low, over a period of time, we're gonna face heat soak. Maybe your intercooler's too small. Maybe you don't have enough airflow to it. Um, you use an air to water and it's melted all your, all your ice out, you don't have a big enough water pump on it, so it's not really doing its job. There are, again, a few things that can affect how this all comes together. But what's the solution? Well, typically, we're going to pull timing. So in this particular case, that 164 degree intake air temp, I'm pulling 1.6 degrees out to help correct for the higher intake air temp. Now, this car was on high octane, it was on 110 or KNS 120. It was not on pump gas. I don't really think pump gas and any amount of boost is a good idea. But we're going to presume you're on E85 methanol or race gas, racing your off road race vehicle. So, a little bit of timing pull helps keep knock in check. You don't want to get too greedy because then your EGT is going to go through the roof. You can look back at previous videos on exhaust gas temp and timing to see that we have to do something, but we can't get too out of control. And then some fuels are better at managing high intake air temps. Obviously, anything that's alcohol-based is going to be able to take a lot of that heat out, even if it's doing it at the valve, just because it evaporates at a lower temp. Gasoline, by and large, takes 90 degrees out of the charge temp. Ethanol will take 250 to 280, depending on its composition. Obviously, more ethanol is better. And methanol can take up to 600 degrees of latent heat out. This is why some people will just run hot piped. Now, personally, I, I still think that if you're going to run hot piped, you want to have something spraying in the intercooler pipe. Despite the fact there could be a phase change, Having a wet intake manifold isn't going to hurt you because it's sooner or later it's going to vaporize somewhere. Um, you have to have the blow-off valve, obviously, on the compressor side of where your pipe injection is because you don't want to spray fuel out and create a fire. But all of that's going to help to reduce that. And maybe you're like Grubworm and you run three 700-pound per hour injectors or you're like what we've done in the past and you run a couple nitrous jets or a couple of 1600s or something. Some, some in the pipe is going to help if you're going to hot pipe. Now, that kind of covers a little bit of it. I'm going to switch here real fast to an ignition correction table. And if you were to, to zoom in, you're going to see that at lower temps, that 160 degree range, I'm pulling somewhere between 1 and 2 degrees by 158. 3 degrees, 176, so on and so forth. Hopefully we never get into this 220 degree range. If we do, we're definitely going to be down a lot of power. 30 degrees on the Civic with an air-to-air -air was 3 miles an hour. So realistically, that's why you want the pipe injection. Not just to keep the motor happy, but you're going to lose power. The hotter it gets, your manifold air density has dropped. It's going to start, it's going to start suffering. Now back to the data real quick. We're going to go to the response time. This is a different poll, but this really shows how bad the response time of a standard intake air temp sensor is. Now there are faster acting ones. The GM1 was first designed in the 1980s. 
possibly even before that. It's not new technology. Um, I know that T1 has a fast reacting element. Uh, I'm sure there's ones that you can get from uh, other suppliers as well. That's the first one that comes to mind. Some of the ones that Ford uses, for instance, that are built into the map sensors, pretty fast acting thermistors in them. But this one at 4900 was only 136 degrees. Obviously, I chopped right about there, but the peak was 169. Now, when we throw the manifold pressure in there, you're going to see a trend here. Obviously, more boost, more heat. Oops. You can get it to go into the trace. So, that peaked out at 14.2 pounds. So, no intercooler, 170 degree air. That's not going to be good for making horsepower. We're leaving 30 or 40 horsepower on the table easily, just getting it actually to that 130, 137. So, something to think about. I realize this isn't necessarily what should I do, but it shows you the importance of, number one, good intake air temp data, because this directly affects your fuel model. Also, planning out how you're going to build your race car. If you're going to only do eighth mile, you know, these temps, they're going to be so momentary, you probably can get away with it. Maybe you're going to have a, a car that runs in the fours or the fives in the eighth. You know, that's realistically about where we are for a single gear dyno pull. As you can see, this is about four seconds. You know, I'd live with that. Now, quarter mile car, maybe that same car runs an eight. Yeah, okay, now it's doubled. How hot is it going to get? Is it going to stop at some point? Is it going to peak out at 169 and kind of sit there? Is it going to keep climbing? Something you got to think about. Are you going to do a half mile where, again, that time has doubled? Now you're going to be in at 16 or 17 seconds? And what are your temps going to do then? What is that going to do to the overall effectiveness of your race fuel for its octane rating? Is it really going to be enough? Maybe you thought you'd get by on 110, but maybe you need Q16. Maybe you need BP import. Or, again, maybe you're going to run ethanol. You're going to run Ignite 114, Ignite Red. You're not going to care about it, or at least not as much. Or you're going to run methanol, or you're going to run something in the pipe. And while methanol is normally what we spray in the pipe, we can spray water over 140 degree intake air temps. Uh, it, will, it will vaporize fast enough. You can actually even spray ethanol. I've experimented with it. It works. It's not as effective. Um, you have to have really good uh, control over your port injection to take advantage of it. But even that is an option so that you don't have to have a separate fuel system. Anyway, guys, I hope that this has uh, been helpful. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. If you know somebody that is interested in tech, race cars, events, please consider sharing it with them. And if you want notifications as content is added, don't forget to click the bell icon and that will be an automatic function. You'll get a notification on your phone, whatever device you might be on the most. Thanks again. Talk to you later.